Hey everybody, a little bit different video format today. I just got something I've been waiting for for a while. These are a brand new pair of custom made whites boots. This summer, my family and I took a trip. We went to the west, ended up all the way uh, to the Pacific Coast on our camper. And in our travels, we stopped in Spokane, Washington, where White's boots are made. Uh, still handmade boots, of the way boots have been made for hundreds of years. So I wanted to stop in there, get fitted for a pair of boots, and, uh, and order them. So I did. That was five weeks ago, and they just came. They actually came a lot quicker than I was expecting. I think I was told eight to 12 week lead time on them. So pretty stoked they're here. Um, I figured I'd show you the unboxing of them. A little bit about whites. They were started in, let's double check here, I'm gonna tell you wrong, because I was trying to read their, their backstory on their website. Very old boot company. So they were started in 1853, and originally they were in Connecticut. So um, as the White family moved across the United States, they had a couple other boot shops, but now they're in Spokane, Washington. Spokane, Washington is really the home of several top-notch boot manufacturers, but I believe White's is the oldest in the area, or in that, that immediate area. Uh, they really specialize in logging and woodland firefighting boots. In fact, these ones are called smoke jumpers. So I did change quite a few things on the pair of boots that I ordered. Uh, for example, when I went to get measured in the store or in the factory, it's a factory, but they also have a storefront. Um, I discovered that I always thought I was flat foot. Turns out I just had an extremely low arch. So their famous boots all overlay a picture of them now. This, the original smoke jumpers have an extremely high heel and uh, offer a lot of arch support, which I didn't really want. And uh, since I'm not a woodland firefighter, I wanted a crispy crepe sole, which is basically the same sole you're going to see on 90% of mop toe boots. Here they are. These are my boots. Wow. So I went with a black crepe sole instead of a uh, a, uh, a white one. But uh, this is the same leather, just it's uh, smooth on the top and roughed out in the bottom. So rough out leather is supposed to make it a little bit more um, abrasion resistant. Resistant. So here we try that out. That is a that is a big hunk of boot. That is it's heavy. I don't know if you can see this, but there is basically, that's all leather. That is uh, a large amount of leather in there. So uh, quite a bit uh, more durable than a pair of boots you're going to go buy, you know, at, you know, your local boot store. I've had a lot of Ariat boots over the years, great boots. These will outlast them by a long shot. The soles might need resole, but I mean, as far as the actual boot itself, quite a bit better boot. Get the other one out here. So we've got leather shoestrings, and we've also got our uh, you know, regular nylon shoestrings. I like the nylon ones, especially at first, so we'll go with those. I will save my leather shoestrings, and if I need them, I'll have them. Uh, the leather ones will be pretty handy if you're welding or grinding a lot, you're less likely to burn in half. So if we burn these ones in half or break them, we'll go to these ones. Okay, I had to, had to make a phone call because when I put these boots on, they felt a little different than I remembered them. Kind of look a little different. I thought I screwed something up when I ordered these, and I, I kind of did. First time ever ordering a pair of boots, so I'm sure when they asked the question, I just said no because I didn't understand or didn't misinterpret it. But basically, there's no toe box to this. I'm sure when they asked me in the store, you want a toe box, I assume they meant steel toed boots. Turns out the toe box is what gives this more structure. So this is extremely soft in the toe area. For example. Here is a pair of, this is another pair of White's boots. These are just a, these are a much cheaper, more mass produced boot that they make. Still a very high quality boot, but this is a Perry Select mock toe, or Perry hybrid mock toe boot. There's structure in the toe making that leather stand up a little bit and keep its shape 
and there is none here. So the leather lays flatter. That was my fault. But I think it'll be all right. We're gonna go with it because they still they still feel good. They uh, just don't quite have the look that I thought I was ordering, but uh, you live and you learn. Does not affect the function. Uh, they do come with a uh, insert, but uh, I'm probably gonna run without those just to have a little bit more space in the front of them. Yeah, that does, taking these out does give me a lot more room in the toe area. That's one thing I can't stand with boots that are tight in the toe region. That's kind of a no-go for me. So that should eliminate that. And next time I order a pair of boots, I'll make sure I have that toe box. But I'm gonna lace these up and well, I'm gonna start wearing them. One thing about these boots, put together with large amounts of leather. So that leather takes a while to break in. I mean, for example, Say so these have a crepe sole, so they are a little different. But if you, uh, they still have this gigantic slice of veg tan leather. That's going to take a while to mold. But once the once I break these boots in and wear them for a few hundred hours or hundred hours, or however long it takes, this big slab of leather will be molded to the shape of my foot, which will kind of give it more of like a custom feel. So I'll probably start wearing these. Uh, I don't know, a few hours at a time. Today I'm going to be doing some work in the skid steer. I'm not going to be on my feet a whole lot, so it might be a good day to. Know, start that initial break-in process. Uh, these boots should last a long time. The leather in these are just extremely thick. Um, compared to, well, compared to a pair of brunts, for example, uh, the leather in this is like, I don't have a micrometer with me, but I've seen plenty of other videos showing it. It'll be like seven millimeters thick. And like, a, well, even my Thoroughgoods, those are good work boots. Uh, that's what I wore last year. Uh, Thoroughgood leather is like two and a half to 2.2 millimeters thick. So much thicker leather, much heavier leather, but that comes with a little bit heavier break-in process. But uh, yeah, these, these things can be easily resold. And whenever I wear this sole out, I'll just resold them and keep wearing them. So should last me a long time, but I really like boots. So I, I like anything that's handmade and made with craftsmanship and you know, check out some videos of uh, White's boots being assembled or any of the Pacific Northwest brands. Uh, the way they're built, I think, is pretty cool, and uh, I can really appreciate the amount of workman workmanship and craftsmanship that goes into that. So that's kind of what led me to buy in these. Uh, had a lot of boots. Uh, most of them last me six months to a year. I figure these ones will last me a few years of constant use if I really want to. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that and. Um, they're all leather. There's no synthetic materials in here other than the, the sole. Like there's no liner. So if you want Gore-Tex waterproof, these aren't that. But in my experience, once a Gore-Tex boot gets soaked, it stays soaked for a long time. Also, these being just leather inside, they smell like a saddle shop after a year. I know that because the other pair of white boots I have, I've been wearing since February, and uh, they don't stink. I guess that's just a you know pleasant side effect of them being all leather, no synthetic materials inside. I was pretty excited about this. This was not sponsored. I paid for these boots. These are boots are not cheap. Go buy any boots. No boots are cheap anymore. But man, again, these are the White's boots. There's plenty of other good boots in that area if you want to check them out. Uh, Nick's boots, Frank's boots, JK boots, uh, Drew's boots. I've never had any first-hand experience with them, but I do know they are constructed in similar methods, and they're all roughly in that same price point. The Drew's might be a little bit cheaper, but um, and check them out. They range in price anywhere from 300 to depending on the different kind of custom leathers you end up with you can get well over a thousand dollars in a pair of boots if you want at that point you're probably not wearing them to go run an excavator like i'm about to do but um yeah you can you can dress them up quite a bit so one thing i did forget to mention they do come with a fully gusseted tongue so it should keep stuff out of there and a kilty basically that's just a thing that goes in there and saves your tongue your tongue is a lot thinner leather Save some of the abrasion on it. Keeps it from getting uh, too scarred up. So, kind of got uh, interested in these boots. Found them, really. I'm watching a channel called the Rose Anvil Channel. If you uh, want to see how... One thing that dude does that's really interesting. He will take a pair of boots just like this. Put them in a bandsaw, cut them in half, and show you exactly what's inside of them. I'm not doing that because, well, I just bought these things to wear and uh, whatnot, but uh, it is really interesting to see the different layers of leather in a pair of high quality boots. And then also he'll take, you know, more uh, synthetic made boots. Uh, he, he, I think he cuts a pair of brunts in half at one point, pretty popular boot in the ag community at the moment. 
uh, you can really see the difference between a high quality pair of boots and a pair of boots like that. One thing I started noticing um, with the boots that I've been choosing, it seemed like I was choosing boots that were comfortable immediately, which understandable, you want to be comfortable, but I think they were starting to have long term effects. Like that comfort was because there was so much foam and things like that in the boots. They weren't really providing me any kind of support. They were just comfortable. And then I started having like knee pains and things like that. And when I started wearing higher quality boots with more support in them, that seemed to go away. So take it for what it's worth. That's been my experience. That is uh, one of the reasons why well, I ended up spending the amount of money I did on uh, pair of high quality boots. And I've got the one boot on now, and let me tell you, there is a lot of support in it. I can definitely feel that these are going to be boots I will not be wearing to Farm Progress Show this year because they will definitely not be broken yet. One other nice thing about getting them custom fitted, uh, I like, like I said, a wider toe area boot. And uh, with these being custom fitted, I was able to you know, specify that. I ended up going with just a pair of E width boots, but if I wanted to, could have had these boots built on the, um, with just an insert right here, like a, when they lasted the boot. The last is like a wooden block and they stretch this leather over. I could have had them put like basically a, a strip right here of leather on that lasting block to make it a little wider in this area. Maybe would do that on another order if I was ever out there again. Maybe play around with that idea. I don't know if I'd do that over the phone. Because these do feel good. There's plenty of room in them. But uh, yeah, you can do a lot of stuff, especially if you understand what you're ordering, which apparently I'm still struggling with. Really enjoyed going out to the, uh, to the store or the factory. Like I say, anyone can walk in there. We just happened to be driving through Spokane. I already had a pair of whites, uh, mock toe boots I've been wearing for a while, so I, I wanted to you know, try their, their custom made boots. So I filmed the beginning of this video about a week ago now. So I've been wearing these boots off and on for a week and I thought, uh, before I publish this video, it would be a good time to talk about one big difference in a pair of handmade boots versus buying a pair of like, you know, ke your normal Keens or Ariots, Wolverines, you know, anything else you'd see in a, in a regular box store. The break-in period on these things is pretty rough. So, you can get different heel profiles, different uh, uh, arch supports and things. I have a pretty flat foot. I got a moderate arch support. I can tell a huge difference. There's a lot more arch support in this boot than any of the ones that I've been wearing for a while, including my Perry Selects, uh, my White's Perry Select mock toe boots. I mean, that's what I'll be wearing at the Farm Progress show this week. That's what I've been wearing for about six months now. These have a lot more arch support. And one thing I've noticed while standing still or standing you know, straight up and down, working in the shop, that arch support's pretty comfortable, actually. It seems to help. Uh, with, I mean, it's just, it helps my body, I guess, a little bit more support, so that was pretty, pretty nice, but that said, these boots are, you know, they're hard. I feel like if I wore these all day, every day, at the moment, I'd probably end up with a couple blisters. I usually wear them till lunch, or till about two or three o'clock, and then put on some tennis shoes or a different pair of boots. So that's how I've been doing that. I did take out the inserts, I'm just, uh, there's no inserts in these boots, they're just a uh, Hard, tan or hard strip of leather in there. So that's uh, going to take a while to break in, but when it does, that arch support, the heel and the balls of my feet, it'll break into uh, the shape of my foot. So that should be pretty comfortable. Eventually, it's just going to take a little while. They think, I think they say 80 to 100 hours, maybe it's 80 to 200 hours or something like that. It takes a while, but I did want to address that. Also, the purpose of this video, like I mentioned earlier, whenever I find something that's pretty cool that I like, I want to share that with people. I don't know why, it's just I've always been that way. And I found these boots on a YouTube video, so it dawned on me that some of you guys might not find these without seeing them on a YouTube video, because it's not like you can go to TSC and pick these up off the shelf. So that was kind of the purpose of this video. Also, I'm going to be double posting this video. Some of you don't know, I used to have another channel called the After Hours channel. I've since renamed it to just Brian Brown. I'm going to start doing some reviews of you know things like boots or uh, tools or just different things that we get into or different things that I find that I find interesting. So I will be double posting that. There'll be a link in the description. If anybody would like to uh, check that out. Thanks for watching. Again, this was not a sponsored video in any way, shape, or form. These were 100% a reverse sponsorship, meaning that I paid for these boots in full. Overall, I think they're going to be pretty sweet. I think I did forget to mention the stats on this. This is brown rough out leather on the bottom. 
and smooth on top. So basically this is the same leather top and bottom, just it's reversed. Ordered this in an eight inch tall upper. And then of course I had the black uh, crepe sole the bottom. So yeah, that's it. This is, uh, like I say, the White's Smoke Chaser, slightly modified. But thanks for watching everybody, if you would. Drop me a comment if you have any experience with uh, handmade boots, be it Whites, Nicks, JKs, Wescos, Franks, any of the other big ones or any ones I haven't heard of. Please let me know because like I said, I do appreciate quality handmade um, products and I would say these would fit that bill. Thanks for watching and we will see you guys in the next one. We will be at Farm Progress Show this coming week, August the 27th through the 29th. We will be there. Tuesday and Wednesday, maybe part of a day Thursday, I'm not sure. We have a long drive, so we probably won't be there much Thursday. But if you're there, check it out. We will be walking around, Dad, my brother, and I. See us, say hi, and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.